Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. In this third and final part of the topic, marriages in Pakistan, let's discuss the role of the most important person in the marriage, the husband. From an Islamic perspective, the husband already has a huge responsibility in terms of helping his wife raise the kids and earning money for the household. But in Pakistan in particular, husbands have an even greater burden, and that is the pressure they face from society to behave in a certain way. So based on our past culture and traditions, men who get married feel that they have to control their wives. They have to command them, instruct them, force them to behave in a certain way. If a wife refuses to change because she has her own personality, society sees the man as a failure who has not been able to control his wife. And besides this, men in Pakistan also face a lot of pressure from their parents who demand that they should be given respect in a certain way. And if they're not given respect in that specific manner, then they make their son feel bad, who in turn takes out all his anger on his wife. He will threaten her with talaq, he will use emotional or physical abuse, anything to control his wife and make her do what he wants. So really, it's all about control. Now, what does Islam say about this? The plain and beautiful hadith from the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, says, treat women kindly, for the woman was created from the bent rib, and the most crooked part of the rib is the top part, so treat women kindly. Now, what does this hadith mean? Women were created like men. They have their own nature, their own qualities, skills, preferences, personality. Marriage is not about the husband trying to change his wife's personality or her preferences. Doing that will only destroy her mental health and it will break her, exactly as the hadith is mentioning. That's why Allah compares the woman to the crooked part of the rib. If you try to straighten the rib, you will just end up breaking it. You cannot straighten it. So if you forcefully try and change the wife's personality and her nature and her fitra, you will simply break her. By controlling her, you cannot expect her to love you or to respect you. On the other hand, she will simply become a patient of depression. Instead, a husband has to understand that to love his wife means to love and accept everything about her. Even if she has preferences that are different, a personality that is different, a nature that is different, love means accepting all of it. And this comes back to what I said in the previous episode, that love is not romance, love is sacrifice. A husband who truly loves his wife will sacrifice his desire to control her and will instead accept her for who she is. But then, of course, we could ask this question that since the husband is the head of the family, what does this mean? Does that mean he can never tell his wife what to do? He can never request certain things from her? Of course he can, but there is a difference between requesting and controlling. You will request someone who you deeply respect. You will control someone who you have no respect for in your heart. Now, that's a very important distinction to make. Husbands need to first learn to respect their wives. The only time a husband can control his wife from an Islamic perspective is if the wife is engaged in haram activities. Other than that, husband and wife, it's all about partnership and companionship. It's about requesting each other and learning to accept each other as opposed to trying to control each other. But then, of course, what about the pressure that a man faces from parents and society? Well, men need to understand how to balance between their mothers and their wives. Usually, when a man sides with his wife, his mother will threaten him with Jahannam, making him feel bad that Allah will now never forgive him, his akhirah is doomed because he is now ignoring his mother and he's giving more attention to his wife. Believe me, that's not the case. Mothers are mothers who should be given love and respect. Mothers are not God. Mothers have a right over their sons, but wives have a right over their husbands as well. A man who pleases his mother but ignores his wife's rights cannot expect Allah to be pleased with him. In the same manner, a man who only pleases his wife 
while ignoring his mother's rights, cannot expect Allah to be pleased with him either. So men need to understand how to balance the rights of their mothers and the rights of their wives, and that by far is the most difficult thing to do. It's not easy. There is no book that teaches you how to do this. It can only be learned through experience, which means many mistakes will be made, and that's okay. But as we end our discussion on marriage today, just remember that regardless of what you do to improve the marriage, whether you are a husband or you are a wife, if the marriage still does not improve, it's okay to end it. There is a reason that talaq and khula are permissible in Islam. Your life will not end. You have not brought shame to the family. Don't forget that Hazrat Zainab was once married to Zaid ibn Haris and the marriage ended. They both were beautiful, amazing people, but the marriage just didn't work. Did their lives end? Did they do something against Islam? Did they incur Allah's anger? Of course not. In fact, Allah blessed them both with happiness because it's okay to end something when you're certain that you've tried everything and it's not working. So don't be afraid to stand up for your rights, even if nobody supports you. Remember that it's okay. All you need is Allah. Pray and ask Allah for His guidance and ask Allah for support. And then just follow your heart. Assalamu alaikum.